Yeah, today is going to be a special. Today I'm going to talk about the last two witnesses. You are privileged to listen to the last two witnesses. This is the sermon. You are supposed to be responding to Al Mahdi's sermons. Now, the first 12 disciples or the first 12 spies failed. Now, this is for Bible studiers. Most people are familiar with the first 12 spies that Moses sent out. Those first 12 spies is a picture of the first 12 disciples and how that movement failed and you'll know why they failed in just a few moments all right they lacked truth and it was too many people now in numbers 13 17 through 33 it reads and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there were we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Wow. And so we were in their sight. They were scared. Too many people. They lacked truth, and they were scaredy cats. Moses sent 12 spies to explore the land of Canaan and report back to the Israelites. Ten of the spies returned with a negative report, saying that the land was too strong to conquer and that they felt like grasshoppers in the presence of giants. Simply put, the 12 spies failed because of the fear of man. Now, I can expound and go into detail. Y'all know me. But I want to keep it short so we can get to the main point about the two spies, which is the last two witnesses. Moses sent 12 spies. Now, who do the 12 spies represent? The 12 spies represents the 12 disciples, the Christian movement. Christianity fell for many reasons, but I just want to focus on the main reason. Too many people, too many late leaders, too many messengers. Yes, I like that. Too many people writing scriptures. It's just that simple. The 12 spies represents Christianity, and we're going to get to these two spies. Okay, I'm about to hurt some unlearned scholars or Muslims in general's feelings with what I'm about to say right now. There's only two messengers in Islam, and they are one. It's the last two witnesses. That is Al Mahdi and Miss Dunna. Muhammad is mom and dad. See how you can say mom and dad inside Muhammad? Just like you can spell ma and dad in Al Mahdi. The seal of my prophethood is amazing. Paul wanted to be me. The difference, the difference between me and him. Me and Paul. He had sons. I have the daughters. Why you think most Mexican men name 
their daughters Maria because one of the last messengers is a Mexican woman. This is why we have a female Mexican president right now, y'all. Wake up. It's all because of Rose. Now, I'm careful on what I say because I don't want to hurt this person. This person is dear to my heart and I love her. I just want to um, wake her up when she wakes up. But I woke up first. So I want to be respectful with this person's identity. No man will become between us and this woman will follow suit. She knows her place as a lady. This is seen all through the Bible. There arose a prophetess. Get it? A rose. See? Like a rose isn't a rose. There arose a prophetess named Deborah. And she judged the children of Israel. Get this, y'all. She had daughters under her. One of them was Jael, the tempeh killer. Trust me. There's nothing new under the sun. Now think about the story of Mary um, helping her own people uh, with the flowers, you know, the story about the Virgin Mary appearing and telling the guy of Mexican descent and to build his church on this other side. See, all these things all tie down to a woman. See, the Prophet Muhammad did not have the complete revelation of the Quran. The Quran was not complete until John Q comes. I'm, I'm the John Q that comes to complete the Quran. Because there's not just one person that's going to die. The Prophet Isa dies, al Mahdi dies, and then the last witness, that's a woman, she dies. Because you're supposed to honor the father and the mother. And they honor the son above the mother and the father. So the mother, the father, and the son all has to die with the lie of Christianity. Okay? So there's, in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, it talks about the last two witnesses. It talks about the last two witnesses. And that's my cat making a lot of noise. Her name is Mimi. She got trapped in my room right now. And so she's making noise in the background. But either way it go. She's a very clean cat. Don't have to worry about anything in this room with her. Going on. So, there's a woman that's the last witness along with the male. Now, check this out. There's nothing new under the sun. I'm so curious to see what Allah will do through her. Now, when you say this woman's name, you will say Allah. When you say it, she helped me so many ways. She was the first to put a canopy over her bed, and I put a canopy over my bed, and Allah revealed to me later that our bed was the Kaaba, and all the Muslims was praying to us. And that makes sense if we are the last two witnesses. You see, prayer right now is restrained because the last two witnesses right are here. We have the power to stop the rain that's going into the prayer. Right now, we have the power to stop all that. And we're stopping all of that right now. Prayer is only coming up from the last two witnesses. Because we're getting ready to enter the judgment 2034. And there is a man and a woman on top of the Kaaba. 
okay? There's a man and a woman. Just like Bill Ha was on top of the Kaaba, there's two. That's why the pronunciation is Bilal. It's two. There's a man and a woman on top of the Kaaba. And it's not Muhammad. It's the real deal, Muhammad. It's mom and dad. It's the last two witnesses, Al, Mahdi. Let's go to the story of the two spies, the successful spies, if I might add. Now, all the Muslims, whether they don't know, they don't even know it, but they were praying to the last two spies. And that is us, the last two witnesses. Let's go to Joshua 2 and 1, as you can see on the screen. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent out Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all of the country. And the women took the two men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went, I won't not, that means I don't know. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, see, on top of the Kaaba. Two spies are on top of Rahab's roof. There's two spies on top of the Kaaba. Okay? The Muslims fail to realize that they were praying to two witnesses. That's why even in the Salat, you pray to the family of Ibrahim. And then you pray to the family of Muhammad. You're praying to the Mary. And you're praying to the father. That's what, you, that's what you've been praying to. That's what you've been praying to this whole time. Okay? Because the last two witnesses is going into al Mahdi is whom Allah ultimately receives prayer from. It's the high priest. Okay? al Mahdi is the high priest. So... There's two spies on top of Rahab's roof because there's two spies, two last witnesses on top of the Kaaba whom all the Muslims are praying to right now. They don't even know how their religion works. Their religion works based on them receiving a prophet through a prophet. They were receiving a prophet in the name of a prophet. They were receiving al Mahdi through the name of Muhammad. And they don't understand how that works. So let me continue to expound on how all the Muslims are praying to the two spies. You see, Ruf. We are on top of the Kaaba. All prayer and intercession goes through us, the last two witnesses. This is seen in the Book of the Bees. This is seen in Seba. I like to call it Say Bye Bye or the Real Sabbath. That is 34, the 34th book of the Quran. Saba, Shiba, Say Bye Bye. In that book, I call it the Real Sabbath. It goes into how they rejected the last two stones, the last two messengers. 
We are the only two whom Allah is receiving prayer from right now. Prayer has been shut down. This is the end. Okay, it's coming up. It's coming up. Prayer has been shut down. Our message is simple. We are prophesying of the soon destruction in 2034. Just like Noah warning people of incoming destruction. Just like Lot warning people of the world soon coming destruction. Now let's go to Joshua 6. Joshua 6 and 22. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house. Harlot's house. And bring thence the woman and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and mother notice inside Rahab you can spell Abba Abba you can spell Arab okay this is going into the ruler of the Arabs and her father and her mother and her brother and all that she had and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel and they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive in her father's household and all that she had and she dwelleth in Israel unto this day because she hid the messengers because this was all set up y'all for a picture of something that was going to happen later Joshua sent to spy out Jericho with two spies because that was a picture of the last two witnesses in the end. And if you notice, Rahab is going into the ruler of the Arabs. And from this nation, this nation we call um, Mexico, is going to come the new Israel. The new tribes of Israel is going to come out of that nation. That's how this scripture is going to become a reality. Because it says Rahab dwelt in Israel even unto this day. Now going on. All those who listen to the messengers, the last two witnesses, will be safe. If they have touched me, the stone, in sincerity, it will be a testimony either for them or against them at the last day. Our message is simple. We have the date. I am the Bilal with the pallid dates. I am the Bilal whom your prophet heard my sandals scuffing in heaven, in paradise. I am all these things. I have the date of the end on my arm. You see, this is the reason why the Prophet Muhammad loved dates. We are the black and brown, see? Black and brown dates. It's not just me. There's another nation involved. He loved before we even knew him. He knew us. Before we even knew him, he knew us. Okay, nine years and it's over. Now let's look at the scriptures of these last two witnesses or these last two olive trees. This is going to be in Revelation, y'all. Revelation 11. See, why is it 11? Because the last two witnesses is a picture of the twin towers. The twin towers. That's exactly what it's a picture of. There's going to be two people that's going to be killed at the same day. And they're going to raise three days later. We are going to be the first of the resurrection. Not Isa. No, not Isa. 
The father and the mother will be the first people to be resurrected. Revelation 11.4 These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man hurt them, he must be in this manner killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. That's going into the power to shut down prayer. And have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony. Why? Because these two last witnesses have watches. They have watches on their arm. They know the end. And that's what we testify. And that's what we prophesy about. The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So the last two witnesses will be killed after the nine years. Okay, now let's keep going. Notice all my music talks about being unstoppable, raising up an end time army, cleaning up this earth and raising up the tribes of Israel. Years before I even joined Islam or read the prophecy of al Mahdi, y'all, I was talking about this stuff in 2016, 2017, 2012, 2021. Before I even read about al Mahdi in 2024. That's what my music's all been about. Being al Mahdi was the missing piece to the puzzle for me. I finally learned my purpose in life. Revelations 11.8 And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. All that stuff is a metaphor. Don't panic. So the last two witnesses will be killed. Now let's go to Revelations 11, 9. And they of the people in kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. You see, Al Mahdi is going to clean up the earth. He's going to get rid of all wickedness. And we're going to torment the people. We're going to torment the people because we have watches. We can't be harmed for nine years. Okay? That's what that's going into. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet in great fear. You can't be walking all on my keyboard, Mimi. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. You see, the father and the mother is going to be the first ones to be resurrected. The last two witnesses. And the same hour and there was a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant of frightened, and gave glory to the God of heaven. This is all future prophecy. This is going into the death of the last two witnesses. I like to say the lamb, um, but let's keep going. The Bible talks about entertaining angels. This is going to be in Hebrews 13, 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Why does it say angels with a plural? Because there's two people that are witnesses 
We are witnesses. We're here. We're pure. We're holy. Remember them that are in bonds or in chains as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. All this stuff is metaphors. Now, the main thing in all I said is that there's angels walking around whom you don't know that is the mother and the father of this complete earth. That's why we call it Mother Nature sometimes. Earth is referred to as Mother Nature, okay, because it's going into the mother of the earth and it's going into the father of the earth. Is going into the mother of the prophet Isa and is going into the father of the prophet Isa. And they would have to die as well. The prophet Isa will die first. He will die first. Okay. This is the sin of putting gods before God's Christianity. Alright, this is why Islam is the best the best religion. Now, have you ever noticed that Elohim, Yahweh, is both male and female? If you look at the name Elohim, it actually means male and female. There's a such thing as a goddess. There's a such thing as a god. In the Hebrew, the Hebrew culture, there's a such thing as a goddess and a god. And we had a mother and a father over the whole religion of Islam, over the whole religion of Israel. That's what people fail to realize because Elohim means male and female. That's why the last two witnesses have to come back and die as well. For the sin of Christianity. Alright. The Hebrew word Elohim. Is the plural form. Of the singular terms. El and Eloah. Which means gods. El is the masculine term for God. And Eloah. Is the feminine term. However. Elohim is used in the Bible. To refer both male and female. Deities. And it can also mean Godhood or divinity. See, people fail to realize that there is a such thing as a goddess. And they fail to realize that there is a such thing as a god. And this is going into the last two witnesses. Now let's keep going. There are side notes um, in John 8.58. Um, when Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was I am, he was saying, Before Abraham was Al Madi. Before Abraham was Al Madi. Okay. So today you just learned about the 12 spies which failed. Too many people, too many messengers. And the last two spies is the picture of Al Madi. It's the picture of Islam. We are successful because we don't have that many messengers. Okay? We don't have that many. Joshua only sent out two. And this is going into the head apostle and the foot apostle. This is going into the last two witnesses. This is going into Miss Stunner. And this is going into me, the Stunner. Not that many messengers. Not that many messengers. That's why we have success. Because in the heavenly realm, there's only one God, Allah. And there's only one messenger. And that is Al-Mahdi, whose real name is Muhammad. That's why we only mention one name in the Shahada. We only mention one name. Because it's Muhammad. Not the Arabian Mohammed, the black Mohammed in 
Song of Solomon, chapter 1, 5, and 6, the ruler of the Arabs. I am the shocker because I've shocked the Arabs. I am Bill Cosby because I have the jello. I'm walking around with a halo. That's why that jello is there. You know, because I have a gel around me. I have a halo around my head. I'm making all of the Arabians jello as well. They feel some type of way that their Mahdi is black and they don't understand the metaphors that are in the Quran and in the Hadiths. Every word is a metaphor. I have a broad forehead and a big nose because I know the end. I descended upon the hospital in Fort Wayne on Broadway Street. 700. I'm the real 700. I'm the real stunner. I'm the real Benjamin Broadway. I know the time of the end and I have it on my arm. I have, I have the Rolex on. I have the Rolex on my arm. I have the time of the end. That's why that watch is so expensive. I am the man walking around with the end on my arm. I'm that man. And there you have the last two witnesses. The last two witnesses is a picture of the Twin Towers, like I told you, falling at the same time. The last two witnesses will be resurrected first. We will be the first ones to be resurrected. The last two witnesses, Al, Maddie. So boom, today was awesome. Today was awesome. Um, before Abraham was Al, Maddie. Remember, Jesus said everything he said was not his own. Let's read that. John seven sixteen. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. His teaching came from his Father. Everything Jesus did was to glorify his Father. And so therefore, that was Al Madi speaking through Jesus when he said, I am. I am Al Madi, brother. I am Al Madi. Everything Jesus said, was to glorify his father, period. He that rejecteth me and receive not my words have one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, listen, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Speak, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Everything Jesus said was in his own words. It was the Father, it was al -Madi, it was Lamanti, it was the Almighty Father speaking through him. Guiding his every word, same thing with the Prophet Muhammad when he wrote the Quran and the Hadiths, and that's what they fail to realize. Everything was in metaphors. Okay, so there you have it. The last two witnesses, I love to call it the Twin Towers, because in 2034, September the 16th, the last two witnesses die. Just like the Twin Towers falling in the same day. It's happening. It's going to go down. The mother and the father. And you have exclusive revelation. That you will never hear nowhere. You will never hear anybody talking about the last two witnesses in detail like me. And you'll never hear nobody talking about Al Madi in detail. More than me. Assalamu alaikum.